in the Quran that we are the children of Adam. Yeah. When did Adam come to earth? I mean, uh, uh, you talked about 10 billion years, you yes. talked about, you know, how old is, you know, when, when, when did Adam first appear on, on earth? You see, uh, one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the graveyards of prophets and messengers, all of them are not known except for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beautiful. Yes. Only the only prophet, we know his graveyard and we visit and, and get uh, lots of blessings from being there is the graveyard of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Um, so we don't know where Adam is buried. But the oldest record of an intelligent being was found in the southern part of France. They call him the Cro-Magnon Man. And by carbon dating, this Cro-Magnon Man has been dated at 37,000 years. By extrapolation, Adam would, would not exceed 100,000 years. Mm -hmm. um, where, where is his grave? Only Allah knows. We don't know it. But definitely Adam um, uh, lived in Mecca. And uh, because the Prophet ﷺ has told us that the Kaaba was built by the angels for his own worshipping. And uh, uh, the name of Jiddah uh, is referred to uh, Eve, may Allah be pleased with her, because it is assumed that she is buried there. Okay, Dr. Zaglul, uh, you know, you mentioned Mecca. Yeah. And we know that Muslims face what is called the Kaaba or the cube no. five times every day in their prayers. On the Kaaba there is a stone yes. called the Black Stone yes. that has very interesting history. And yes. you wrote a paper yes. a long time ago yes. uh, about this Black Stone. Yes. And since you're a specialist in earth sciences, can you tell us a little bit, yes. where did it come from? Is it true that some people say that it used to be white and then it became black, or yes. was it black in origin? Yes. Can you please tell us a little bit? Yes, you see, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has told us, when uh, Ibrahim السلام, and his son Ismail السلام, were raising the foundations of the Kaaba. Then Ibrahim السلام, asked Ismail to go around looking for a rock of a different color to be made a, a beginning for the tawaf, the circumambulation around the Kaaba. Uh, we know that Mecca is built on a mass of crystalline rocks. And whenever these crystalline rocks, igneous and metamorphic rocks, are intruded into the earth, they intrude in vast, immense areas. So uh, uh, Sayyidina Ismail السلام, went around looking. He couldn't find anything different. Mm -hmm. When he came to his father by sunset, he said, Father, I couldn't find anything. But he found a huge block of rock by him, and Ibrahim told him it was brought to me by Jibreel. السلام. So they uh, together put it in that uh, eastern corner of the Kaaba to make it as a, a beginning for the circumambulation around the Kaaba. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted to have said that this stone min ahjar al sama min ahjar al jannah it is a part of the stones of heavens it is part of the stones from paradise and uh, of course uh, uh, orientalists when they listen to this uh, they said Arabs do not know anything about geology because the area along the western coast of the uh, of Arabia, uh, or, or the eastern coast of the Red Sea, is uh, covered by a vast expanse of basalts. And basaltic rocks are dark rocks, are black rocks. And they said apparently by ero erosive processes, a block of these were taken by uh, uh, currents, uh, torrential currents, to Mecca. Because Mecca is in a valley. And they said the Arabs don't know this, so they, they said uh, it's uh, from heavens or it's a meteoric body. So they uh, organized uh, a trip to that region. Uh, one of their uh, intelligence people was uh, in the army. They uh, taught him Arabic for eight years and uh, sent him to Morocco to get the Moroccan accent and then to Egypt as a pilgrimage coming from Morocco. And he went to Medina and then to Mecca. And this man says that uh, the, the viewing the Kaaba from the uh, premises of Mecca is the most moving uh, image he has ever seen in his life. But uh, nevertheless, he went to the, uh, to the Kaaba, and uh, the black stone, because it was transported several times, uh, has been fragmented into about 15 small pieces in the size of a, of a walnut. And these now are impregnated into a resin and put into a silver framework. So he easily got part of these, uh, one of these uh, uh, nuggets and went to, to Jeddah. 
Uh, I don't want to make the story too long, but he came to the British Museum Natural History in London. They thin sectioned that rock. And they proved that it is a meteoric body of a unique nature that's not known before. And it is white inside and black on the outside. Yeah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is quoted to have said that it used to be uh, as white as milk. And it has been tanned by the mistakes of people or the evil actions of people. That's beautiful. Today, uh, people or scientists talk about the origin of the universe through a big bang theory. Yes. That there was one huge mass yes. that exploded and the high speed of the rotation uh, created the universe. Yes. Uh, how does Islam look at this big bang theory? Is there any reference in the Quran to talk about this? Theory. But uh, as if you want to, t to need to speak about the lecture tonight now. But Maybe uh, we can introduce <laughs> the listeners and get them to go. Okay. Because already, already, I have to warn you yeah. that it's only standing room all, from from talking to people. Everybody is so excited and yeah. they're getting ready to well, be there tonight. Well, 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 so. You see, we have a verse in the Holy Quran that speaks about the expansion of the universe. The Quran reads, "Wasma abrinaha bi aydin wa inna lamusyoon." Verily. We have um, made the firmament uh, steadily expanding, and we will be f continuously doing that. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the beginning of the 20th century, science observing stars noticed that the, uh, the uh, light coming from these stars shifts towards the red uh, light, red uh, spectrum, uh, red part of the spectrum. And of course, uh, through a, a simple experiment in the laboratory, we uh, came to know that if the light moves to the red spectrum, this moves means that the source of light is drifting away from you. And if it moves towards the uh, blue spectrum, this means that it's shifting towards you. So they, they were amazed. How could stars be shifting away from us? What would govern the relationship between these stars? Where is the role of, of gravity? But uh, this argument took more than 30 years. And uh, finally, in the first third of the 20th century, 1933-35, uh, science came to, uh, to agree that one of the realities of our universe is that it is an expanding universe. Actually, it was Hubble, you know, the, the, Hubble, the, the yes. Hubble, Hubble yeah. Yeah, yes. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Hubble and others, you mm -hmm. see, but they formulated under his name. Yes. Uh, they, science started to think, if we go back by this expansion, then everything in that universe every form of matter and energy, space and time, will coalesce together to form an initial body that mathematically is uh, so minute in dimensions that cannot be seen, and so dense in, in, uh, in, uh, as far as weight would go that, uh, no, that all our mathematical laws and, and physical laws can stop, cannot answer that. So they call this the initial body. And they said this initial body was under uh, in a, in a case of instability, so it had to explode. It exploded because they don't believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They don't believe in the Creator. Uh, this explosion changed uh, this initial body into a, a cloud of smoke, and uh, due to the uh, variation of density in that cloud of smoke, uh, some of these elementary particles start to condense on each other, forming uh, the first stars, and from the stars, then we got the planets and. Uh, moons and, and, and the rest of the uh, uh, heavenly bodies. Uh, the theory uh, is one of many theories that uh, try to explain the origin of the universe. But we, as Muslims, support this particular theory because there is a mentioning of it in the Holy Quran when the Quran reads, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ having the unbelievers seen that both heavens and earth were in an initial form. And then we have split them apart. And, uh, uh, and we have made out of water every living being. Uh, shouldn't this be enough for them to believe? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said uh, earlier, that uh, matters of creation and annihilation, uh, creation and resurrection, cannot fall within the framework of science completely mm -hmm. because they have taken place in the domain of the unseen or a domain which we have not yet seen. And of course, uh, if you indulge into the, uh, this area of creation uh, with its three uh, directions, creation of the universe, creation of, of life, and the creation of man, unless you receive divine guidance in every one of these three areas, 
you can easily go astray and you can reach nowhere and this is the status of most scientists in the West. Absolutely and that takes us to the initial argument that people